Hi everyone, hope everybody are doing good. Today I would like to share that I have accomplished the uh, certification called Certified Kubernetes Administrator. And this certification was issued by Cloud Natu Compute Foundation. And uh, in this video, I will, sh I will share my experience from the start to end. How did I get prepared and how the exam went and how did I get certified by giving the Certified Kubernetes Administrator exam. So this certification was issued by CNCF, in short, we call it as a Cloud Native Compute Foundation. And this certificate has uh, three years of validity. And it's the most demandable uh, certification in the DevOps world. And if you're really working, or if you're working in a DevOps engineer and you would like to accomplish something which is more into orchestration, so you can, I, I strongly suggest you to take this exam and get certified. So, Let's start about the uh, experience and the uh, how did I get uh, registered for this exam. So for registr registration for uh, for registration of this exam, you need to log into training.linuxfoundation.org, and you need to enter certified Kubernetes or in short CKA. So once I enter, you will get the option to enroll today, and now it is three hundred ninety-five dollars. In IST, uh, I, INR, it comes 32,000, maybe 700 something, like maybe 32,734 rupees. Usually, this Linux Foundation give you some discount, which is called as a coupon code. So, but, but those coupon codes do available at uh, sale period, which is a, a Black Friday, Cyber Monday, or uh, other other sales. But yeah, you can do check into this foundation and you get notified the uh, coupons or any. Um, Offers are available, and uh, I'll do. I will share uh, the coupon codes are available if anything from my side. Um, since I have registered it, so I to get emails from the Cloud Native Company Foundation about it. So, so please do watch my YouTube videos, and you'll get to know about the any updates related to certification and coupon codes. So, in this, uh, in my journey, so I got the uh, entire certification in the fifty percent of discount because I have registered on the uh, Cyber Monday sale. So that is about registration. And if you want to get the bundle along with the material and all fundamentals, so you can register, uh, you can opt this bundle also, which is comes on five hundred ninety five dollars. So when it comes to uh, codes, syllabus, and curriculum, we call we we, we can say in short. So these all the competencies do come up in this CK, which is storage, troubleshooting, workloads, and cluster orchestration, installation, configuration, and services and networking. So these all the major uh, syllabus, uh, you know, ask in Kubernetes certification exam. And when it comes to certification exam at earlier, like you know, you need to log in into the this uh, training uh, uh, Linux Foundation portal. And which called as a PSI. So once you log in into that, you need to launch the private browser. So you need to download the private browser first, and you need to launch that browser in your laptop. And I do recommend you to take any webcam while you are giving the uh, certification because you are you are going to monitor by the end of the prompter. So so th this prompter uh, will watch you. And before giving exam, so you need to you need to submit your. Uh, you need to submit your government government issued valid proof, which you call you can mention any um, driving license or your passport, any other supported document. So it should be have your name and your photo and your signature. And before starting your exam, you need to capture your photo. You need to submit that so the the backend team will validate it and they will uh, chat you in the chat window at the other side and they will release your exam to get started. And before getting started your exam, so the proctor who is out there, he's going to see all your uh, environment of examination, which is your sidewalls and your desk or your uh, desk underneath and your shoulders because they do check, is there any person doing uh, cheating kind of stuff or did he use any uh, smartwatches or uh, did so is there any way that he is going to uh, get the answers from other resources? So that's why, you know, you need to clean your environment and you need to keep all your mobile phones and even headset. Headset are not allowed in this examination. So you need to you need to talk to your um, system system receiver or you can opt for any uh, webcam. So it has a receiver. You can talk to that. So once this all verification has done, so the proctor will release your 
uh, examination so you do have 120 minutes of time to to answer of 17 questions so in the 17 questions these questions are combined uh, as uh, uh, certified kubernetes application developer and administrator because you know as i mentioned so in the syllabus itself we do have a storage and troubleshooting and workload scheduling so in the workload scheduling these these concepts do come in our certified kubernetes application de developer also and we need to schedule the parts so we need to edit the parts and we need to um, scale the deployments and all so when it comes to talking about each part of uh, syllabus so first one is storage so you know you need to <clears throat> understand the storage classes and persistent volumes so the questions may come from writing the one persistent volume file and you need to create one persistent volumes as per the task requirements and you need to give access modes for it and you need to specify the host paths and what all paths that are available in the persistent volumes and when it comes to persistent volume climb so you know the questions may come in exam saying that hey uh, just create one persistent volume client and this is the story class and this is the access modes so the tasks do come up and you need to write those um, things in your yaml file so you need to create one persistent volume client and later you need to bind that to your part which is uh, one of the components in kubernetes in the part you know you need to specify the volume mounts and mount parts everything so uh, these type of questions do come in certification and when it comes to troubleshooting so you need to uh, the first one is evaluate to evaluate cluster and node logging so the questions may come saying that hey uh, you know we do have this cluster and something has happened to the cluster it's a, it, it's not scheduling parts so it's not scheduling any kubernetes components go and check what went wrong instead of cluster so you need to go and check the logs of your cluster you need to find what went wrong and you need to do you need to you need to perform the actions accordingly and uh, understanding the containers and side outs and the start logs uh, troubleshooting application failures and troubleshooting cluster components failures so usually in the cluster components we do have a master node components and cluster node components so when as per the task, so you need to act accordingly. You need to take the decision, decisions to restart the kubectl or kubeadms or kubelet, or you need to enable those all the components. Or you need to, if you want to upgrade the cluster, so you need to upgrade the cluster components from one version to other versions. So these all concepts do come in troubleshooting, uh, you know, components. So when it comes to worker loads and scheduling. So understanding deployments and how perform rolling updates and rollbacks and use config maps to create and config applications nor how to scale applications so when it comes to rolling updates and rollbacks so you know we may get the requirements to roll upgrade roll rolling update all our applications from one version to another versions and you know if something went back went wrong so you need to roll back and when it comes to Q, uh, <clears throat> config maps, so is there any non-sensitive data if you want to pass to your running application, you can can use the config maps. And you know, the, when it comes to secret, you can store your secrets in con uh, Kubernetes secrets. So we, you know, we may get the uh, questions from config maps and secrets, so we need to be care about it. So we need to understand how these con config maps get created and how these config maps do inject into the parts. And now how to scale applications. Yeah, that, that's the thing right now. Uh, if you have created any deployment, so in a deployment, you may have four parts running under deployment. So you need to understand how these deployments do uh, scales from four to 10 or 10 to 20 or as for the desired value in the task. And next is understanding primitives used to create the robust self-healing applications deployments. And understanding how resources limits can be offered for scheduling. So we have a resource limit and uh, um, in our uh, workloads and scheduling so you need to pass the resources and the stories how much resources to be uh, play on the resource limits and in a, in, a, in a pod level and awareness of man manifest management and common templating tools so you need to awareness of manifest management such as we do have a sample template of creating the resources in kubernetes in a yaml file or a json format next cluster architecture installation and configuration so we do have a role-based access control so you may have to create role-based access controls like you know and you need to you need to bind it like cluster roles and cluster bindings and you may need to create the service accounts so you need to bind the service accounts as per the requirement in the examinations and use kubeadm to install the basic cluster yeah we may have to do that and manage the high availability uh, kubernetes cluster 
and provision uh, underlying the infrastructure deploy Kubernetes cluster and perform a version upgrade a Kubernetes cluster using QBADMs, implement the either the city backups and restores. So as mentioned in the syllabus, so you do have to work on the Kubernetes cluster level and you know, is there any updates are there, so you need to upgrade it. So is there an issue when, is there any issue with the cluster? So you need to log in into the particular node and you need to understand the issue and you need to do the, um, either perform as per the task saying that, you know, enabling the kubelet or uh, restarting the kubelet. So those all are things are uh, usually do in a cluster level. So you need to perform all those things. And when it comes to implement this ETCD backup and resource, so, you know, we do have ETCD database to available in Kubernetes cluster. So we may get the requirements to take the backup of particular uh, ETCD database. So for that, you need to log in into the targeted server and you need to uh, take the root level access. So from there, you need to pass the uh, backups uh, commands and you, know, to, you need to take the privilege of root users. So accordingly, you need to pass the restored commands and you need to pass the certificates, keys, and all, and you need to pass the where you want to store the snapshot of ETCD or ETCD directory. So these all uh, uh, these all concept you may have to tackle in the certification exam. The next services and networking. So understand the host networking and configuration cluster nodes. Understand the connectivity between ports. Understanding cluster IP node port load balances of types and how the ingress controllers and ingress resources do utilizes and do create it. And uh, how to know how configure uses a code DNS and choose an appropriate container networking interface for working. So in this net, uh, service network, so we may have to create the network policies by um, giving the aspect the task. So we, we may have to uh, look into the task accordingly. We may have to create the network policies and we may have to shift the traffic to the back end as per the network policies. And we may have to create the uh, ingress controllers or ingress instead of the network policies. And we need to understand what kind of um, back end services are there. So we need to open the ports on particular ingress and all and uh, <clears throat> understand the cluster IP node port load balances of service types in endpoint. That's true because since you're working in networking, so you need to understand the services are available in the Kubernetes. You need to understand how the cluster IP can be used to shift the traffic and node port and load balancer. And you know, since you are uh, working on networking or networking policies or if you are creating networking policies, so you need to understand how the pod labels do uh, uh, given and how the namespace uh, uh, um, name, namespaces have been given a match label. So how can we bound those namespaces as per the networking policies? So these are places you need to learn and you need to be very uh, knowledgeable to crack the CK in, uh, certification. So there's all, all the syllabus do available on this uh, certified Kubernetes administrator exam. So you need to practice well for all the uh, all the syllabus on each concept. So since it is weight as based, because storage comes for 10 percentage and troubleshooting comes for 30 percentage, workloads for 15 percentage and cluster architecture installation for 25 and service and networking for 20. So on all, on all adding to all these percentage, so we do comes on 100 percent of all the your examination to getting uh, certification on uh, CKA. So you don't need to get the 100 percent. You just need to get 66 percent to get certified Kubernetes administrator examination or to get past your examination, you just need to get 66 percentage of marks on this examination. Um, I I can say when while I writing the examination, I didn't feel that it's more complicated because it's really depend on your hard work and even the questions were not much tactile. So you just understand the uh, task and you need to accordingly need to take the actions. And uh, the small uh, tip I want to give you in this video that, you know, while you are shifting from one question to another question, just just mention the um, kubectl command that they do give on, on top of each question because you may have to switch to the particular namespace to perform this particular task on each question. Or you may need to shift to, or you may need to set the context for each question. So do not forget that, uh, you know, while you're going from one question to another question, so you need to shift or you need to set the concept each time. Because while I was giving, while I was writing the second question, I created the persistent volumes, but I, I have created a wrong, uh, wrong namespace. But when I have checked back again, whether did I, did, did this resources was created or not, 
while ran the uh, yaml file so when i say kubectl uh, get pv i i didn't see that resources has been created in default namespace so uh, um when i when i recall again that i didn't set the context for shifting from default namespace to the targeted namespace so this is the main point even you have if you have given 100% of correct answer but you need to create that resources on on uh, correct uh, uh, namespaces so that is the tip that i would like to share you uh, in while if you are giving any um, certification exam so that's all about the you know certified kubernetes um, administrator exams and tips and syllabus uh, and you know this is a very uh, user friendly examination so it's completely task based so you do get the uh, task on 17 so on left side so in the right side you do have one server or you know usually we do get as a ubuntu server so on that you do have a, a browser so you can browse it but yeah so browser restrictions are there so you can only refer to the uh, kubernetes um, you know official documentation which is uh, let me show you so once you go on browser kubernetes.io so this is a website so oh it's not opening let me kubernetes docs so if i go here um, this is the official apps uh, official document of kubernetes so from here i can go in different concepts as per the requirement but yeah, if you want to see the resources related to ports so if I go and search on ports, I do get all the ports related documentation. So, and if I click on it, so I can see all the port definitions files, port concepts. So yeah, you do have access of, you, you can access the official Kubernetes documentation. So you can come, uh, you can browse on the particular machine that you have access from the PSI team, sorry, Linux Foundation. So you can you can you can refer the official documentation if you stuck somewhere and you can come here and you can you can look into that but you cannot uh, you cannot copy the uh, error log that you have received and you cannot come on uh, paste on browser and you can go to the other resources to find the solution so that is a violation and you shouldn't do that violation during the uh, examination and uh, other than this like you know i do got this few violations because while i was giving a, a examination so i was reading the question a bit loudly so i got one violation saying that i shouldn't read these questions loudly so i should be calm while giving the examination and um, while i was giving the examination so i uh, i mean i do have a bad habit to keep my hand under my chin so i was doing that i was covering my mouth so I was rubbing, rubbing my face during the exam. Uh, that time also I got one violation saying that, hey, you should remove your hands from your mouth. So these all violations I do come, but other than this, like, you know, you need to keep your environment calm and you shouldn't allow anybody walking behind your examination because these sessions do monitor by proctor. So you need to enable the video while giving the um, examination. So that's all about the examination tapes and uh, examination uh, patterns. How does it uh, um, how does it happen? How does it work in the editing examinations? And you know, the last one is like you know, you can you can take the multiple breaks during this 120 minutes of uh, examination. So I took more than two breaks because I was stuck at somewhere, and even during the exam, I don't know what went wrong due to some network issue. Uh, one of the terminal had not been giving response, so I was stuck. I was thinking to contact the support team uh, because support team do available at the exam, so you can go and you can uh, take help if you have any issues while writing the exam, saying that uh, if you lost any power or if your server is not, uh, if your server is under response, you are not giving response on time. So, is there any issues went uh, went to you from your side? You can go and talk to the chart team, which is a support team. And uh, yeah, those are all things that I would like to cover in this video. And thanks for watching this video. And do subscribe this video and share it to your friends and like this. Thank you. Stay safe. Bye.